Hey everybody, welcome to my corner of the universe. I'm Danny Brown and I'm going to play something that I hope you really like. It's 180 degrees different than the last thing I just put out, which was an upbeat organ synth, uh, fast paced kind of a rocking number. This is almost classical, the one I'm going to play. Um, and by the way, I got some great feedback from folks, so I really appreciate it. A lot of compliments. I was hearing from people that I hadn't heard from in a while. Uh, a couple of guys that I used to play with in a band 50 years ago. Yeah, so it, that was pretty cool. So anyway, uh, people actually subscribed to my channel. <laughs> and so... I'm thinking maybe I'll start coming out with some things on a semi-regular basis. Uh, thus, uh, this little video that we're doing now. And I hope you enjoy it. So I want to set the stage uh, for this song. It's 1967, and I'm 17 years old. It's the summer of love. I'm playing in a band. I'm playing organ. Uh, I think I, in 67 is, I think, when I transitioned from the Farfisa combo organ uh, to the mighty Hammond B2. This thing was a monster, by the way. I painted it candy apple red. Uh, there was a period of time I was playing with a band called Apple Witch, and I thought, well, why not? And so it's a red organ keyboard somewhere somebody has that organ uh, and it sounded great um, you had to move it around on dollies I mean you know on both ends and you had straps and then it was a minimally a two-man job more often than not a four-man job just to move that sucker around we took it everywhere we took it up fire escapes into basements you name it and uh, it was quite the experience. Uh, keyboards today, synthesizers today, uh, you know, like these puppies over here, they weigh 15 pounds, 16 pounds each. You can tote two of those around in bags and it's nothing. So times change, uh, but the Hammond organ sound is one that uh, is revered and emulated. Uh, the digital versions come close uh, and I probably couldn't tell the difference in a blind test but uh, anyway the Hammond organ so uh, in 1967 let me give you an idea of some of the songs that were out there at that time uh, first off I love the Buckinghams an American band and they were fantastic and he had a big hit with kind of a drag as a wonderful song. I learned a lot uh, we, uh, from, from the Buckinghams, actually. We, uh, we did their songs, and uh, their keyboard player was pretty good. And so I picked up some stuff from him. Uh, the Young Rascals, who later got really old and started calling themselves the Rascals, they had uh, Groovin', uh, another big hit, I Had Too Much to Dream Last Night by the Electric Prunes. Yeah, okay, but the song was really actually pretty good. Uh, uh, let's see, The Beat Goes On by Sonny and Cher, uh, The Letter by The Box Tops, and then we had some really heavy hitters, uh, Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, Light My Fire by The Doors, Sunshine of Your Love by Cream, uh, For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield, uh, which became a, touch, a touchstone type of song for a protest. Uh, sometime I'll tell you the story about me meeting Neil Young, having a conversation with him when he was with Buffalo Springfield. Um, and then uh, there was a band that you may have heard of. They had a hit in Strawberry Fields. I believe that was the song. Let's see. Yeah, I believe that was the song. They also had another big hit. 1967, the Fab Four come out with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah, so, you know, here they are. The lovely lads, Ringo just turned 80. How about that? 
So anyway, I'm playing in a band on the Hammond. And a whiter shade of pale is released. This is a debut single by Pro Call Harem. Uh, this single went on to sell more than 10 million copies. It's one of the greatest selling singles of all time. Uh, it holds a special place in the history of rock and roll. It's a beautiful song. Uh, the combination of the trippy lyrics, the mournful singing, and the classically influenced keyboard uh, really kind of presaged progressive rock. This was a progressive prog rock number. Uh, at, way before Yes and King Crimson and all those dudes. So Procol Harum uh, came out with A Whiter Shade of Pale. It's an organ piece, right? And that's how I learned it and that's how I play it. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different uh, on this video. I'm going to play it on piano, but before I do, I'm going to play a, a short uh, section of A Whiter Shade of Pale on a fake Hammond over here. Uh, so it will kind of refresh your memory as to what it sounds like. And it goes like this. So that's great, and uh, you can really hear the influences of Johann Sebastian Bach, but uh, this was no Bach ripoff. Um, a Matthew Fisher, who wrote that organ piece, uh, that's 100% Mr. Fisher, and it's a classic and endures today. So uh, the reason I want to play it on piano is that it will give you a different perspective, I hope, of that song. Uh, and w the next time you actually listen to it, and I strongly encourage you to, to dial it up. But, but the next time you listen to it, you might listen to it with some fresh ears, a new perspective, because you heard it on piano, which really sounds different, but it really highlights the keyboard part. So that's what we're going to do right now. I hope you like it. It may be a little too precious for some, but this isn't a rock and roll song. This is a progressive rock song. Here we go. And so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. It is a little different, um, but maybe the next time you hear A Whiter Shade of Pale, you'll recall that piece and you can hear it come through all the, the trippy lyrics. And until next time, and if you feel like subscribing, hey, that would be fantastic. Take care of yourself and be safe.